Okay, so our first project, we laid out this very simple composition here. So let's take this a step further and turn it into a more dynamic, more finished looking piece. Something that we would actually use on a piece of furniture or or uh, some project that we were we were designing. Let's make just a few adjustments here. And then let's go to our drawing tools. And over here on the left, we have our drawing tools tab. We've got squares and rectangles and other drawing tools. These tools down here are part of the vector uh, drawing suite or just called the drawing suite. These are the advanced drawing tools. So if you don't see this toolbar, it's because you do not have that add-on module, but we're gonna be focusing on these drawing tools because everything we wanna do, uh, we can do just with the basic drawing tools. And then I'm gonna click the F button here to just snap it back to the front view. We'll zoom out a little bit. And with my rectangle tool, I'm just gonna draw a rectangle shape that kind of encompasses the, the entire board here, but I'm gonna leave a bit of a margin on each side. Uh, and then I'm going to right click and center that on both. So just like we did with the fluid de lee we're going to center that. And now we're going to create a background for this. So in the carving tab, we're going to go to our carving tools. We've got a couple tool options here. One called carve region and select surface. So carve region, if you click that, it'll take any closed shape uh, and it will just recess it down. Uh, and it defaults to a quarter of an inch, but you can change the depth to whatever you want. But it'll just be a flat, kind of pocketed area that's gonna carve out. And carve or select surface is a tool that brings up different surfacing options. So we've got domes uh, and the first one and the surface texture gives us some um, kind of repeating uh, texture maps. And the material gives us generated uh, background maps that give us some nice interesting textural elements. So we'll just click on texture here for now. We'll click on peaks and down here you can change the interval if you want. It defaults to a one inch interval. That's you know the size of the the pattern that's going to repeat. You can change this to more or less depending on the size you want. We'll leave it at the default for now. Click OK. Alright so then that texture comes and fills the entire background. All right, so the first thing you kind of notice is that it's very busy and it kind of detracts from the carving with this very geometric background. So let's select that background. And we know it's selected uh, because it's got the white border around it. So if you're working with, with your project and you're not sure how to select things or where, if something is selected, it's if it's got a white, border around it that means it's selected so if I click on a pattern it's got the white box around it same thing with the background there's another way to know how to select your objects and to work with them while they're on the board and it's over here the carving list so right next to the pattern library the carving list this gives us a list of everything that's on the board and we can select them from here and this allows us to, especially when we start getting to more complex designs, to see what we have on the board and more easily uh, sort and organize. We can even rename elements over here uh, if we need to get very detailed in what we're describing. And then we can also group them into different folders so you can organize them as well. And we'll cover that more in other tutorials when we get into merging and things. So for now, we want to click on that background and just like we talked about how we can adjust the depth of things, we can also adjust the height of things. So depth is describing the lowest point of a pattern or a carving and height is how tall does that sit within that set depth. So if I'm dealing with a quarter inch of depth then I've only got you know a quarter inch to the top of the board. So there's the height is gonna be measured within within that. So 100 is just the default. And if we want to shallow that up to make this more subtle, then we would lower that. Let's maybe put a shit down to 30. And we can lower that height to make it less prominent 
and then that really helps enhance the carving that's sitting on top of it and makes it really pop. So a lot of designing with uh, designer is just a visual thing. So we, so we have this 3D representation that's going to show you exactly what it's going to carve. So it's, it's a very creative arrangement tool rather than a kind of programming type of function. And so it's important that you actually zoom in and look around and see how your design looks. And if you need more space, you can close these drawers over here to kind of open up the board to give you a little more room to evaluate what you're, what you're seeing. All right, so this looks pretty good. I think this would be uh, a suitable maybe drawer front or box lid or even the side of a box or something. We could definitely see this carved on a finished piece. Uh, but before we carve it, we want to do some optimization. So an important part of any carving is making sure you optimize the carving before it is carved. So we do have in the carving tab here, we've got these optimization tools. There are three main tools, feather, draft, and what we call bit optimization. So bit optimization and carving is a fairly universal setting for most, most carvings. Unless you're doing some kind of inverted or mold making, you're almost always going to set your bit optimization to best. Now bit optimization, it's got a graphic here that shows here is a carving and then you see this gray part is representing the bit and when it's at none, you can see the bit actually goes and chases down that very last point of that V, which then makes the end result wider because the bit is wider than that, that final point was. So if you carve it out with no optimization on, it will widen out the deepest and tightest crevices in the carving. So at bit optimization best, it tells the bit to go down as far as you can without changing the outside edge geometry and uh, at that results with a much cleaner carving. So it's not going to go and hit the deepest points of every one of those pixels, but that's not really important uh, when you're just trying to get a visual representation um, of the best carve result. So let's look at those again and I'm selecting everything on the board so every carving we have and I'm selecting those by holding the shift button down I click on the top one hold shift down and click on the bottom one that selects everything I can also right click and and uh, choose select all and then I'm choosing bit optimization best so let me go back to none and you see everything got a little bit skinnier and you get some of these uh, edges that are rounded and when I go to best everything gets a little fuller and the edges are better defined. Feather is something that you're going to use uh, pretty often as well and the feather is something that automatically is seen on any pattern you draw on the board. So if I take this background and I click the hide button here, hide carving, and this will just hide it for a little bit. Uh, this outside edge that we see on the patterns, this is a feather. So that feather is a ramping down from the top surface down to the base level of the carving. So this is an optimization uh, for visual purposes so it makes visually this carving not look um, so stark when it's carved into a flat board like this but it also allows the bit to ramp down into the the full depth so we could actually turn this off and you can see uh, now there is no ramp down it's just a straight up and down edge which is not uh, going to be uh, visually very pleasant looking in in this type of situation. So 
uh, or quarter inch is the default for patterns when they come in and of course you can change that there's different settings here all the way to a custom one but when you have a background like we did here and we can unhide that now the you don't see the feather because now that top surface is already removed by all of the, this other material that is around the, the carving but this region back here does need to have some kind of ramping down as well so we want to place a feather on that and a quarter inch might be a little much but a quarter inch will work and now we've got that ramp down and it also gives us a nice bevel edge to our our project so visually it, it creates a nice aesthetic effect but it also serves um, nice purpose for the optimization of our carving. It's going to make it easier on the bits and make it easier for the, the overall carving to be successful. Draft is kind of like feather except feather is coming from the top surface of the board down to the base level of the pattern and draft is going from on the outside edges down to whatever the base level of what's behind it that's makes any sense so feather obviously we don't see feather here because it's coming from that base level and it's going up to the surface which has already been carved away so if we put draft on here and we can use large as an example large puts a bevel on the outside of this pattern down to whatever surface is underneath it so draft is very useful for for patterns and text in particular, they get very skinny. You're gonna risk some possible chip out uh, because the carving is gonna to get too skinny. You wanna put a beveled edge on it, but it gives it something to ramp up to rather than just a straight up and down edge. Because another thing you have to remember is the bit itself is tapered. That's gonna be doing most of the carving. So the carving of that, or that bit itself is going to cut into these inside edges. So bit optimization and then draft is going to assist with that. So for draft, I don't put it on any outside shapes. So for this background, we don't need any draft on that. It's not going to do anything for us there. But on these parts that are rising up from a background, that's where you want to have draft. So we will click on those and we'll add draft. And for this, we'll just put a small draft on. We don't need anything drastic. These patterns are already pretty optimized for carving out. And then we'll go through this optimization phase in every project we do in these tutorials. So you'll see more and more why and how we use those and, and when they're very important, especially with text. Okay, so this project is finished and optimized and ready to upload. So just as before, we'll click on the file menu here. We'll go to compile project. And I'm gonna click on floor demo and we'll just add a one to it. We'll leave it at good and click accept. And the file will write to the card and it'll be ready for carving.